Are recent events in Israel connected to ancient prophecies about the end times and the return of the Jewish people? The ongoing conflict in the region has sparked discussions about its role in fulfilling biblical predictions. In today's video, let's explore how the recent conflict between Israel and Ampan Gaza is connected, or a fulfillment of an end-time prophecy. Militants from Gaza fired thousands of rockets at Israeli towns on October 7th, and they managed to break through the heavily protected border fence into Israeli territory. In the process, they killed more than 1,400 people, which included civilians and soldiers, and took 199 hostages, according to Israeli authorities. This attack was unprecedented for Israel, as it had not faced such a situation since the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Hamas, the group responsible for these actions, called this operation Al-Aqsa Storm and claimed it was in response to perceived Israeli attacks on women, the desecration of the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, and the ongoing siege of Gaza. Israel responded by declaring war and initiating Operation Swords of Iron. They targeted what they identified as Hamas and Islamic Jihad facilities in Gaza. Israel also disrupted the supply of basic necessities like fuel and water to the Gaza population. Between October 7th and 12, Israel dropped 6,000 bombs on Gaza, equivalent to the total airstrikes on Gaza during the entire 2014 Gaza-Israel conflict, which lasted 50 days. The Israel Defense Forces IDF, urged Gaza civilians to leave their residential areas for their safety, but many felt there was no safe place to go. All crossings out of Gaza were closed. A complicating factor in Israel's response is the hostages held by Hamas. Hamas claimed that some hostages were killed by Israeli bombings, although Israel has not confirmed or denied this. In response, Israel ordered a complete siege on Gaza, blocking the delivery of electricity, food, fuel, and water until the hostages were released. Later, Israel's military instructed the 1.1 million people in northern Gaza to evacuate their homes, hinting at a possible ground invasion. How is it tied to end times? Things happening in Israel, like rumors of wars and earthquakes, seem like signs that could lead to the end times. These events are precursors to what we read about in the Bible, especially in Revelation chapters 6 through 18. It's like a confirmation that we are living in very uncertain times, but these times also have a special meaning according to the prophecies. Now, some people see all these conflicts and say, well, there's always been conflict in that region. This has nothing to do with the end times. It's not definite, but we'd tell them this. For the past 2,000 years, the context was different because there was no nation of Israel. But now, Israel exists, and they're in the land God promised to Abraham. That's why there's been continuous conflict. Satan and the nations around Israel don't want them to possess that land. Satan is very possessive, and God promised that land to Abraham. This is a clear sign of the ongoing conflict. It's like when your car's check engine light comes on. You need to pay attention. In a way, God is flashing the check engine light on history and the nations, especially regarding Israel. So, we really need to pay attention to what's happening there. One such moment is the Siege of Jerusalem. Certainly, let's dive into some more historical events and understand how they are connected to what some believe are signs of the end times. One crucial event in the past is the year 70 AD when the Siege of Jerusalem occurred. It was a defining moment for Jerusalem and the Jewish people. In 70 AD, Rome sent General Titus to lay siege to Jerusalem. The siege lasted for many months, eventually leading to the conquest of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. The temple was burned down, just as Jesus had predicted in Matthew 24 when he said, Not one stone will be left upon another. You can visit the remnants of this even today. During this event, about 10,000 Jews were killed on the spot. In 135 AD, all the Jews were banned from the land. This event was significant because it began 2,000 years of Jewish dispersion. They were scattered to about 70 different nations around the world. The return of the Jewish people to their homeland after 20 centuries of being scattered across 70 nations is often called the miracle on the Mediterranean. It's a remarkable occurrence in history because no other group of people has experienced such a return. Now, let's fast forward to another crucial event, which is 1948 when Israel became a nation again. This was a monumental moment. God had predicted this several times in the Old Testament. Almost every Old Testament prophet, except Jonah in some way, predicted the regathering of the Jews to the Holy Land. The significance of Israel becoming a nation again is that many end times, prophecies in the Bible, including those in the book of Revelation, Daniel, 2 Thessalonians, and the writings of Paul and John, couldn't occur without Israel being in the land. 
You could think of it as a two-step process. First, Israel needed to become a nation again, step one. Then, the fulfillment of end times prophecies could begin, step two. So the regathering of the Jewish people was a prerequisite for these prophecies to take place. Remarkably, about half of the world's Jewish population has returned to Israel today. This gathering is seen as a supernatural event and plays a crucial role in fulfilling biblical prophecies. As for the Old Testament prophecies, the most compelling one regarding the regathering of Israel is the notion that God told the nation of Israel that if they obeyed him, he would protect them and everything would be fine. But if they disobeyed, he would scatter them among the nations. This prophecy is seen as a testament to the enduring relationship between the Jewish people and God throughout their history. There's a deep connection between what's happening in Israel and the biblical prophecies. It's like a confirmation of the credibility of the Word of God. Many things God said in the Old Testament about the Jewish people have already come true, including their reunion in their homeland. It's not just a physical regathering, but there's also a spiritual awakening that's supposed to happen at the end of the tribulation period. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8 even talks about the astonishing rebirth of a nation in a single day, which happened on May 14, 1948, when Israel was officially declared a state. This rebirth of Israel in modern times is awe-inspiring and a fulfillment of ancient prophecies. The Old Testament, particularly Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 24, prophesied that God would gather the Jewish people from all the countries and bring them back to their own land. There's really no other event in history that can match this prophecy. Even though there was a gradual trickle of Jewish return in the 19th century, it couldn't have fulfilled this prophecy because the land was unproductive and desolate. But God used the tragic events of the Holocaust to garner worldwide sympathy for the Jewish people, contributing to the reestablishment of Israel on May 14, 1948. Another significant prophecy is in Ezekiel 38. This one is still in the future and concerns Gog of the land of Magog. There's an alliance of nations that will attack Israel, including Russia. This hasn't happened yet, and we can't find any historical record of such an event before 1948. Many Bible scholars believe this attack will take place during the tribulation period, following the rapture of the church. Speaking of the rapture, it's considered the next major event on the prophetic timeline. The exact date is unknown but imminent, meaning it could happen at any time. And maybe this conflict is the beginning of the rapture. It's the event where the church, the bride of Christ, is taken away before the tribulation begins. Once the rapture occurs, the following significant event would be the signing of a peace treaty in Israel, marking the official start of the seven-year tribulation period. Right now, we're witnessing a significant conflict in the Middle East. If someone were to step in and bring tranquility to the ongoing chaos, they could be hailed as a peacemaker or even a messiah figure. The Bible foretells that in the last days, a leader will bring peace to a tumultuous region. This ongoing conflict could set the stage for such a scenario. In times of turmoil, like we are experiencing now, it's essential to turn to God and find serenity in His sovereignty. Revelation 4 presents the image of God on His throne, in control of everything. Even as the tribulation looms in the narrative, we see God's unwavering authority. He's never caught off guard, never panics, and never holds emergency sessions in heaven. His sovereignty can be your serenity during unsettling times. For those who are fearful or anxious about the events unfolding in the Middle East, the message is to find peace in the knowledge that God is ultimately in control and everything is unfolding according to His divine plan. So, what do you think of Israel's war conflict with Gaza aligning with end-time prophecies? Comment below and subscribe for more.